Hello everyone, this is Dennis, and you are on the Den Electro channel. In one of the previous videos, I showed how I replaced the battery in my UPS. So I took out the lead acid battery and put in a lithium iron phosphate battery. As a result of this, the capacity almost doubled, and the battery itself became almost immortal. Today I will do the same thing, but with a different UPS. It is exactly the same brand as mine, only the power is much more than 865 watts. The UPS is in good condition even though it is over 10 years old. But the batteries that were standing there were dry, swollen, and their walls burst. Here two such 12 volt 7 ampere hour batteries were used. They were connected in series, and the result was a 24 volt 7 amp hour battery. Just like in my UPS, we decided to put lithium iron phosphate instead of lead acid. Now the battery capacity will not be 7 ampere hours, but 15, more than twice. To work with lithium iron phosphate batteries, you will need a BMS. Moreover, for such a powerful uninterruptible power supply, you will need a powerful BMS. My friend decided to buy not an ordinary one, but a smart BMS. It can be controlled via phone. Monitor various parameters. Temperature. Voltage. Voltage of each battery in the battery. And change some parameters on the fly. It will be possible to understand what is currently happening with the battery. In general, now I will talk about the type of batteries I used. About the operation of the smart BMS. And what I changed inside this uninterruptible power supply since the batteries that were inside were freely inserted there, but the new lithium iron phosphate ones did not fit there so easily. If anyone doesn't know why the whole world is switching to lithium iron phosphate batteries, then here's a table for you. These are comparative characteristics of lead acid batteries and lithium iron phosphate batteries. Here you can clearly see that lithium iron phosphate batteries win in all respects. Therefore, if the battery in the UPS has become unusable, then I see no reason to put a lead acid battery back there. The UPS that I will be making changes to is manufactured by APC. Model back UPS Pro 1500. Maximum output power 865 watts. Instead of standard lead acid batteries, this circuit will be used. This is a battery of 8 lithium iron phosphate batteries controlled by a smart BMS. At first everything looks complicated and confusing, but in reality, it is not so. These two wires will now be the plus and minus wires that connect to the UPS. This thing is a Bluetooth module. Through it you can control the BMS via your phone and monitor various parameters. There is a temperature sensor located near the batteries, from which you can know the approximate temperature of the batteries. This black rectangle is Smart BMS, designed to work with 8 lithium iron phosphate batteries with a total voltage of 24 volts designed for a discharge current of 60 amps and a charging current of 30 amps. I released a review of this smart BMS quite recently. There I explained in detail what it can do and how to use it. How to install an application that can be used to control the BMS and monitor parameters. And most importantly, I tested it under heavy load. I will leave a link to it in the description. In this video, I will pay more attention to how UPS will interact with the new equipment. I'll start with batteries. Eight lithium iron phosphate batteries will be used here, each with a capacity of 15 amp hours. The nominal voltage of each such battery is 3.2 volts. Therefore, to get 24 volts, they must be connected in series. In UPS, the battery compartment is located here. Two batteries were installed vertically. The batteries we have chosen are perfect. Together with the BMS, 
they will take up all the free space in the compartment. This is the most ideal option for batteries for UPS, which can be bought on AliExpress. They can maximize the capacity of the battery. As I already said, compared to old batteries, the increase in capacity will be colossal, more than doubling. I connected the batteries with tape, two at a time, and then wrapped all eight. I wound electrical tape between some of the batteries in a checkerboard pattern. This was done so that the batteries would touch each other less. Then I took some nickel plate, some spot welding and started connecting all the batteries. I used a nickel plate 0.2 millimeters thick in four layers. The plus and minus on the batteries are not labeled, but they are marked in different colors. Therefore, it is very difficult to make a mistake when assembling the battery. The terminals on each pole of the battery are copper, but they have a nickel plate welded to them, which is what I welded my plates to. So that the BMS can measure the voltage on each battery, it has this connector with a bunch of wires. I first inserted this connector into the BMS, and then starting with the black wire I started soldering them to the batteries. The black wire will be negative, and the last red wire will be positive. Between them there will be 24 volts. It turned out like this. To connect to the UPS I soldered lugs onto the wires. Previously, two batteries were connected in series with a jumper in the battery compartment. One wire came from each battery. One is a plus, and the other is a minus. Then they connected to this connector, but now this connector began to get in the way, since it sticks out and is in the middle. This is what it looks like on the inside. A small wire with a connector at the end. It is inserted onto the wall of the battery compartment but I need to do it differently. I need to make it fit into the battery compartment on the other side. It could then be shoved in there and pulled out to make it easier to connect batteries. So I made another window on the right. Now if I close the lid and put the wire in there, it can be raised almost to the top. Inside the battery compartment, there were a lot of stiffening ribs on the wall. They had to be removed with wire cutters and sealed with tape to make the surface smoother. Otherwise, the new batteries will be difficult to insert, and you may accidentally strip off their outer insulation. Now everything is ready, let's see what I got. There is, of course, little space, but due to the fact that there is tape glued to the walls and the batteries are wrapped with tape, even under its own weight, the battery falls down without effort. The BMS does not want to be inserted smoothly into the remaining empty space. Therefore, it had to be installed diagonally. The power wires will need to be connected to the connector, wrapped with electrical tape, and pushed nearby. The wire with the Bluetooth module will also need to be tucked into some empty space. The connector will be located in this corner. You will need to stick another piece of tape over the battery and wires to make the surface smoother, since there are also various stiffening ribs on the cover. When closing, it may get caught on the wires. Everything will be pulled out exactly the same only in reverse order. The battery will first need to be pulled using special handles that I made from tape and then the board will need to be pulled out. Before doing this, of course, you must remember to disconnect the connector. Now let's figure out how the new batteries will work with UPS. UPS charges batteries to 27 volts. If we divide this voltage by the number of batteries, 
it turns out that one battery should have a voltage of approximately 3.37 volts. To make sure of this, you no longer need to point a multimeter at each battery, but you can look at it in the phone app. Here at the top of the page, the total voltage of the battery is displayed. To see the voltage of each battery, you need to scroll down. As expected, the average voltage is 3.36 volts. After I assembled the entire circuit, I decided to measure how much energy is poured into the batteries. UPS charges batteries for a very long time since the charge current is only 700 miles ampere. The accumulated capacity in the batteries was approximately 15 ampere hours. This matches their characteristics. But the maximum voltage to which such batteries can be charged is 3.65 volts. The total voltage in this case will be approximately 29 volts. Therefore it occurred to me that perhaps at such a voltage the batteries are not fully charged. So I took a 30 volt power supply, connected it to the battery and started charging it further. As a result, 150 miles of amp hours were filled into the batteries, after which BMS turned off charging. This turns out to be only 1% of the battery capacity. From this we can conclude that lithium iron phosphate batteries do not need to be charged to their maximum voltage. Previously, the minimum and maximum battery voltage was monitored by UPS systems. The charge was turned off when the battery voltage reached 27 volts, and at 22 volts the load was turned off so that the batteries were not completely discharged. Now there is an intermediate link, BMS. It has its own settings. In it you can set protection for both one battery and the entire battery. I set the maximum battery voltage to 30 volts. And the maximum voltage for one battery is 3.65 volts. The minimum voltage for the entire battery will be 20 volts. And the voltage per cell will be 2.5 volts. BMS has a balancing function. The capacity of each battery is approximately the same. So the voltage in all cells will rise and fall evenly. BMS protection will not work. Everything will be controlled by the UPS since its voltage range is narrower. Tests with BMS, new batteries and UPS were successful. I didn't push the maximum 865 watts from the UPS, but I loaded it at 720 watts and everything worked great. With such a load, there is heating on the batteries and BMS, but not critical. The connector that connects the batteries to the UPS heated up the most. At maximum load, the current there is quite decent, almost 40 amperes. In the entire circuit, this is the only mechanical connection, so pay attention to how loose the clamps are. If the connector is very loose, then you must either replace it or try to tighten it with pliers. In the description, I have included links to the Smart BMS review and my UPS conversion. I will also leave links to the AliExpress store where I bought all the equipment. If someone doesn't understand something, ask questions in the comments. I'll try to answer them. That's all for now, everyone.